Welcome to the creative brain of Dean Hawk. Get ready to be challenged, inspired, and equipped to become a better ministry leader. Hey, welcome to the May edition of the Dean Hawk Leadership Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. I just want to recommend that you go to deanhawk.com, pick up the latest, greatest sermon series that we're doing here at Rock Family Church in Colorado Springs. We finished this spring, the We Greater Than Me series. That's available. And yesterday, we just completed a nine-part series called The Favor of God that has been a huge hit in our church and is power-packed. Encourage you to check that out. Also want to just mention curveacoustic.com. And talking to Tim Jackson there, we upgraded our drum enclosure. We love it. Our drummers love it. Our sound men love it because it really captures the drum sound and then he bleed over onto the stage and they can truly mix it. So check them out at curveacoustic.com and ask Tim for the Dean Hawk deal and he will hook you up. The podcast that we want to dive in, the subject we want to dive into today is Excellence in Life, Leadership, and Ministry. Excellence in Life, Leadership, and Ministry. And I want to recommend one of my favorite books on the subject. If you're watching by video, you can see it, but I'll mention it. It's called Excellence Wins, A No-Nonsense Guide to Becoming the Best in a World of Compromise. It's written by Horst Schultz, who is the co-founder of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel uh, chain, and I encourage you to check out that book. But let's dive into this whole subject of leading with excellence, because one of the challenges are is so many people want big results with minimal investment, and people tend to take shortcuts. People talk a good game, but they don't have the talent to back it up with their smack. And so people have big dreams and big ambitions, but they lack the daily disciplines to see them uh, through to reality. And excellence is something that a lot of people talk about. It's like, yes, we're a team of excellence. We want to we wanna have excellence. But so many people don't really follow through, do it, and understand. The simple definition of excellence is the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. You see, excellence isn't just being good. Everybody's good. I, I, McDonald's is good at a hamburger, but I wouldn't call it an excellent hamburger. In Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3, it says, Then Daniel distinguished, distinguished himself above the governors, the satraps, because of an excellent spirit that was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the entire nation. The the message Bible says it this way. It says, Daniel was brimming with a spirit and and intelligence that so completely outclassed the other vice regents and governors that the king decided to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. Well, number one is we, I'm going to share with you today 10 aspects of excellence. Jot them down. Uh, put me on slow play, fast play, but here we go. Number one, excellence attracts. Excellence attracts. I don't know how to describe it, but you can tell when you walk into a place of business, when you walk into someone's home, when you walk into a park, you can feel, see, and know the excellence. You might not know what has made it feel excellent, but there is a difference there. It's it's would you rather go to the restroom in a McDonald's or the restroom in a Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A's restroom and their whole uh, lifestyle of doing business is to do it with excellence. They put live uh, flowers on the tables in the dining room. They, They go above and beyond. And so excellence attracts, and we want to attract people to the kingdom of God. We want to attract people to Christ. But one of the things that deters people is, believers and followers of Jesus that aren't living with excellence. And it actually sometimes offends people and pushes them away. Without excellence, you will never attract people of excellence 
to your church and team. You see, we're going to talk about a lot of a lot of details of excellence and, and a lot of areas of excellence, and most people in your church won't walk into your facility and identify, oh, that is done with excellence. Oh, wow, that is an excellent spirit, the way you're doing that. But here's what will change and what will happen. That CEO, that person of high caliber leadership, they'll walk in and they'll notice that you've dusted in the corners. They'll notice that the grass was freshly mowed before the Sunday service. They'll notice the little things that make the big difference. Number two, there are no shortcuts to excellence. One of my favorite, all-time favorite books is by Malcolm Gladwell, and it's called Outliers. And they basically did research on why it seems that <clears throat> some succeed and others don't. And the number one thing that they found is that no one naturally was gifted or drifted to success. That those who rose to excellence in their field merely put more time into developing their craft, whether that was being a programmer, a, a, a sports uh, athlete, a musician, an engineer. The ones that exceeded above all the others had invested time in practicing and developing their skill, their craft, and their trade. And they talk about the 10,000-hour rule that it takes 10,000 hours of practice to become the best of the best. Example, to be an elite musical performer, you're going to need to invest 10,000 hours of playing that instrument. They said that, that music teachers practice about 8,000 hours, and, or no, excuse me, 4,000 hours, that, that they haven't perfected their gift, that they're not going to go as far in their field as maybe somebody who plays in the Philharmonic. And what's interesting is they couldn't find any naturals who effortlessly floated to the top. They assimilated that it simply worked out that they worked much harder at perfecting their gift. Example, to become a grand master chess champion, you have to invest 10 years or 10,000 hours. And so excellence is investing the time and the practice to improve your skills and that there are no shortcuts. Number three, excellence is a 360 lifestyle. It impacts area, every area of our life. It's not something that we can turn on and we can turn off. It's not something that, that we can be walk in excellence in our professional field and not walk in excellence in our personal arena of life. Excellence is a commitment to live at a higher standard. Financially, it's to live at a higher standard. In our relationships, in our marriage, in our parenting, in our friendships, it's a commitment to live at a higher level. In the, it's the same in our, in our career field, in our hobbies, in our personal disciplines, the way we dress, the way we groom. It's combing our hair. It's, it's ironing our shirt when, oh, there's a wrinkle. Will anybody notice? I don't know, but I notice, so I'm going to iron that short shirt. Dave Ramsey said this, to live a life like nobody else, you have to live like nobody else. We have to live like nobody else. Well, I want to be successful at my career, and, and I want to be a success, um, but you lack effort and focus and character in your personal life, in your marriage, in your family, in your home, you're not going to be a professional success. It starts in every area of our life, but I believe it starts in the personal arena. Uh, one of the things that that really put my I shared was sharing on this topic a couple years ago with my staff, and I said, I said, show me your car, and I'll show you if you're a person of excellence. Show me the interior of your car, and I'll show, you, I'll tell you if you're a person of excellence. Let me see your closet. Let me see your garage. I'll tell you if you're a person of excellence. You see. Many people want to be excellent in the visible areas, but they're not excellent 
in the non-visible areas. But that's where excellence begins. My my garage floor, we've put down the uh, the ultra seal, so forth, and I power wash my floor multiple times a year, especially in the winter time. I power wash out all the grit and the grime, and and I love having a clean garage. Excellence in home makes me have excellence in the professional field. And so success means success means being the best. Excellence means being your best. Excellence means being your best. And so here's the way I would describe it. Number four, excellence is won or lost in the smallest of details. Excellence is doing the small things well, not just the big things. It's paying attention to the small details of life. Everyone does the basics. They do the main things, the big things. Example, pastors across this nation and around the world, they all have church. And that means they're all, a high percentage are going to have music, preaching, announcements, prayer, and offering, and ministry to people. But do you know what we do? Because we want excellence, not just in the preaching, we want excellence in our announcements. And we actually bring our team together, and we rehearse, and coach, and critique one another on how to make this three minutes that they are going to welcome guests, share a core value of our church, and cast vision for investing in the vision and the mission of Rock. We're going to coach them. We're going to talk to them about their eye contact, about smiling when they're presenting. We are going to be excellent even in the smallest areas, we're going to be excellent in our announcements. Everybody tells, hopefully, everybody tells your spouse, your husband or wife that you love them, but an excellent marriage is found in the little details of that relationship. In, in, in our church world, it's, I want the rows of chairs straightened. We They lock together, but the rows get get swimming all around. I want our usher team, when they come on for their service, to make sure the rows are in line, that the front leg of every uh, row is on that small piece of black tape that we are crisp and clean. I want unused items removed from the stage. I don't want a bunch of extra stuff on the stage. I want to demonstrate excellence in all that we do. Number five, excellence is a personal commitment to give your absolute best every time. Excellence is a personal commitment to give your absolute best every time. It's really not about competing with other pastors or churches or ministries or organizations. It's about giving your best. Did you dial it in yesterday when you preached, or did you give your absolute best? That's the attitude that I want for myself and that I want for my team. Did you do your best? If it came up short and you did your best, I'm not going to fault you. But when the event, the activity, or the service misses its mark, and I ask, did you give it your all? Did you do your best? And that employee, that pastoral staff member says, I probably didn't. Well, then there's an area that we need to sharpen and we need to refine ourselves that if we're going to do something, we're going to do it well, we're going to do it with excellence. And number six, excellence is built through consistency. It's it's maintaining a high standard all the time. Excellence is built through consistency. Do you know why we, we see and how we see the excellence of God? We see the excellence of God is because the the planets are in a perfect orbit around the sun. We see that the the earth spins, I think it's 64,000 and some odd miles per hour, 64, 8, I'm not sure what it is, and it never changes. It never never, uh, alters from that. There is consistency. 
We know that the seasons come and the seasons go. We know that fall is going to come around in another 12 months. There is consistency, and that brings excellence. You see, we can't be hot one day and then cold the other. Um, Excellence cannot be maintained unless there is consistency. It's fulfilling the job. It's being a person of your word. It's a consistency of character. It's a consistency of our integrity. Consistency to be faithful as a person of your word. I want people to say, man, when Dean says it, He's a trustworthy person. If he said it, he's going to make it happen. Example, I have many pastor friends in town, and I'm just going to leave it generic, but I'm going to tell you that uh, one one of my dear friends that we connect on a regular basis, we will make plans on our calendars that might be six weeks out. Do you want to do you want to take a hike? Do you want to grab lunch? Do you want to grab a coffee? I will put it on my calendar. He will put it on his calendar. I might not speak to him for the next six weeks, but I know. No, I will show up at three o'clock and he will be there. And he knows the same. Why? Because there's been a consistence of faithfulness. There's an excellence to his word. And then others, mm, I might be texting him the morning of, just confirming, are we still getting together today for lunch? Number seven, excellence is fueled by strong communication. Excellence is fueled by strong communication. Through the uh, thorough communication in all directions, whether that's personal, professional, to our team, to our leadership, to our volunteers, and the better we communicate, the easier excellence is to achieve. When there's a breakdown in communication, it hurts us and it hurts the organization. But excellence is able to be achieved the greater our communication and the stronger our communication. And when in doubt, communicate, follow up, and follow through. Number eight, excellence is being efficient, efficient with time. Excellence is being efficient with time. You want to turn people off and turn people away? Make them feel like their time is being wasted. We want to be efficient in our check-in and our check-out of our Rock Kids. If the lines, everyone knows, lines are taboo at Rock Family Church. If that means we need to buy another iPad, another two iPads to help with our check-in, another printer for their name tags and their stickers, we are going to make that investment because we value people and we value their time. And when we respect their time, it brings excellence to our ministry and to our organization. An excellent church service is often determined or defined by time as much as content. Let's put it this way. I can get up and I can preach a sermon for 50 to 60 minutes. No sweat, no foul. That is easy. Give me a basic outline. I stand me up. Let me go. I can do it. But I can condense that same 50 to 60 minute message down to a sweet, tight 30 to 35 minute message and have the same impact. And I would challenge and say, have a greater impact. Because we've all been listening to people when they're speaking, and, and, and we feel like they're just wandering. They're trying to find, what am I really trying to say? They haven't really thought out what they want to say. They're, they're kind of making it up on their own. And I would tell you, I feel that you value me, you respect me when you are concise and use precision in your presentation. It was interesting, uh, Easter last month, uh, we were going to have water baptisms on that day, and and uh, the one service, our first service, we were having 36 people get water baptized, and that means they're each going to give a micro-testimony, and then we're going to baptize them in water. And so my part of the sermon for the 75 minutes, I had 15 to 20 minutes. I was aiming for about 18 minutes. Here's what I can tell you. I had to work harder to prepare for that 20 minutes than my typical 35-minute sermon. I had to make every word count. I had to cut out all fluff and and make the, the message 
precise. But you know what my takeaway was? I don't know what my congregation thought. They thought it was a good message. But I can tell you as a communicator, I walked away and I didn't feel that I shortchanged my people on Easter Sunday. I actually said to my wife, it's interesting. I said everything that was in my heart that I felt need to be said, I just said it with precision and didn't have so much filler. Let's walk in excellence by being efficient with time. Number nine, excellence is completion. Excellence is completing the project, completing the task. Everyone starts strong, but the thing that determines someone as a winner or a loser or excellence or subpar is did you finish well? Did you finish the task? Did you finish the project? A lot of people have great intentions and big ambitions, but they come up less than because they're not a finisher. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, I've fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. A lot of people are great at starting a lot of things, but a person of excellence is great at finishing things. It's uh, excellence is, is doing the last 10% as well as you did the first 10%. It's that consistency factor. It's finishing well and finishing strong. And lastly, number 10, excellence is going the extra mile. It's exceeding people's expectations. It's the extra effort. Uh, I heard this once. Uh, I'm not sure who to give credit to. They put it this way. Excellence is the commitment to go beyond what is required or expected. Excellence is the commitment to go beyond what is required or expected. I love the story back in the book of Genesis when Abraham sends his oldest servant to find a wife for Isaac. And as he comes into town, the servant prays, Lord, I'm going to ask for a drink, and whoever offers me a drink and waters my camels as well, that's the one I know that you've chosen to be the wife for uh, my servant Isaac. And so he goes in town, and there's Rebecca. She's getting water. She's gathering water to take back home. And he says, ma'am, could I have a drink of water? And she gives him a cup of water. And then she turns and she says, allow me to water your camels as well. We know the story. There were 10 camels and that a thirsty camel can drink approximately 30 gallons of water. And for the next several hours, Rebecca was going to let her, her uh, bucket down, let that uh, uh, down to draw water out of the well, to fill the pot, to fill the trough. And she was going to repeat that action over and over again. Excellence brought promotion to Rebecca. She became the daughter-in-law of the wealthiest man on the planet, and she was going to marry into this, this family of God and become Isaac's wife. Why? It says she was a good-looking woman. It, it wasn't about her cooking skills. It wasn't about her knitting skills. It was about that Rebecca was a woman of excellence, and she went the extra mile. I challenge you, pastors and leaders, go the extra mile with your team. Go the extra mile with your members. Go the extra mile in preparing your sermons. Go the extra mile in the events. Um, make it a big day, whatever you're going to do. Put the extra effort in. And then I know we're approaching Memorial Day coming up here just in, in, in two weekends, but I just want to throw this out. One of the things that has won for us, and it's going the extra mile, you probably have some time to do it, is we ask for members to send us the name and, the, and a photograph of family members or loved ones or personal friends that have given their life serving our country. And then we put together a video that rolled through the names and the faces of family members and relatives and loved ones and friends of those uh, that were a part of our church family. And so it made a national holiday feel very personal and very intimate. I would encourage you to consider to do that. If you want to see what we did, I'm trying to remember. I'm not going to commit if it's on our on our video from a year ago 
uh, last Memorial Day a year ago. You might could find it on our Facebook page, the whole service. Uh, usually we just have the sermons. Uh, you can check that out, but think about doing that. Go the extra mile. Pastors, God bless you. If I can serve you, help you, or assist you, I mean this. My personal email is the letter D, H-A-W-K, at rockfamilychurch.com. Reach out to me, send me an email. If I can help you navigate a situation in your church, if I can help answer a question or just be a, 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 a safe place to bounce some things off, shoot me an email. We'll set up a phone call and we'll be sure to connect. God bless you guys. Have a great month of May. Thank you for joining us today. For a free sermon series and teaching outlines by Pastor Dean, visit us at deanhawk.com. Be sure and join us next month as we continue our growth on leadership.